Our next speaker is going to be working on her competent communication manual. Her speech is going to be five to seven minutes long. And Amy, as we said, is a, is a member of the Fox Bailey speech. So this, the objective of this speech is to research your topic and to, to get understanding about something. And the name of her speech is Preventing Medication Errors. So Amy, can you just please come up and Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests. The following events that I'm going to share with you, you may have heard on the news. They are true stories. The first one was in 1994. Betsy Lehman was a Boston Globe reporter admitted to the Dana-Farber Institute for Chemotherapy. She'd been diagnosed with breast cancer and thought that she would take part in an aggressive study. Unfortunately, she died about four days later. Not from the chemotherapy, but due to a medication error, she received four times the intended chemotherapy dose. The next event happened in 2006. In 2006, at Methodist Medical Center in Indianapolis, Indiana, five babies in the neonatal intensive care unit received 10,000 units of heparin instead of 10. Unfortunately, three of the infants died Two of them survived with some injury. Most recently, Dennis Quaid. His twins were at Cedar sinai Medical Center in the intensive care unit, and they received 1,000 times the dose of heparin. By the way, heparin is a blood thinner that's used to clear out IV lines. So you're probably asking, what do these events have in common? Obviously, they're tragic events, but they're also events that could have been prevented. In the United States, we are subject to over 100,000 preventable adverse drug events every year. This is the equivalent of crashing three jet airplanes into O'Hare each week. The other way to look at it, on a cost level, it's costing the United States about $3.5 billion annually because each time one of these events occurs, obviously injuries occur, but patients also have to increase their length of stay and a lot of the times the insurance companies don't cover that, the hospital has to. So you're probably also asking, well, what really happened at each of these events? I mean, why would somebody want to make a mistake like this? Couldn't there have been some kind of a double check? The good news is there are some new behavioral checks that have been put into place. The first being, in most hospitals, when you're going to administer a, let's just say, potent medication such as chemotherapy, it's required that you get a second nurse check. Also, there have been non-punitive reporting structures put into place. So for instance, if I'm a clinician, and if I make a mistake, I can report it and not be punished, and I also have counseling available. Technology-wise, there's also advancements that have been made. The first being barcoding. Bedside bed verification is also the way that this technology is described. So for instance, the two situations, Methodist Medical Center with the infants and also Cedar sinai with Randy Quaid's twins, those could have been prevented if there had been a barcode label. Someone could have scanned the label, matched it to the patient, the clinician, and of course the correct dose, the event could have been averted. In the case of Betsy Lehman, it was actually a transcription error. What had happened is she had been written a prescription for 4,000 units of a certain chemotherapy agent over four days, but it was misread as being 4,000 units per day for four days. So for that, there is a technology called computerized physician order entry. As we all know, writing, writing notes, obviously someone might misread it, and that's exactly what happened in that situation. Someone misread the prescription, so now that information can be entered into a computer system to avoid that type of an error in the future. The third technology that I'm passionate about is smart pumps or infusion medication software. People call it smart, smart software, dose error reduction software. But I can share an example with you. How many times are you typing on your computer and you get spell check to catch something that you've misspelled every day? Okay, even on my garment today, I was trying to enter Northwest Highway, and I think I entered Norwest Highway, and it wasn't coming up, I couldn't figure out why. 
that's another example. But what these pumps can do is their software at the bedside, so for instance, if I was about to accidentally administer 10,000 units of heparin to my patients, it would have stopped me from making that error and have given a pop-up message saying, you've gone outside the dose, do you really want to continue, yes or no? And there's also hard limits that can say you cannot continue, you have to reprogram. So the good news is there's behavior, there's technology, and now you're probably saying, well, doesn't every hospital have all these technologies and aren't they using them? I mean, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Unfortunately, only about 30 to 40 percent of all hospitals today have one of any of these technologies. I am on a mission, and I think there should be legislation that all hospitals should have these technologies, but better yet, we should make it affordable for them to adopt these technologies so that there's safety for all patients in every hospital. It is a consumer. I also recommend that if you, a friend or family member going to a hospital, find out what patient safety initi initiatives they have in place. Do they have any kind of a commitment to quality improvement in averting these types of medication errors? In conclusion, as we all know, to err is human, and mistakes can happen every day. But if there are measures in place behaviors and technologies that are in place to avert these types of error, let's take advantage of them and let's be aware so that these types of errors don't happen to you, your friends, or family members. Thank you.